Hello, it's Daria here, and uh, we are here sitting in our studio at the start of a new year. Uh, this time I don't have a guest. Instead, what I decided to do is go back and take a look at uh, some of the highlights from the past Leaders Agenda episodes, and uh, for very good reason. It's been quite the turbulent few years for us, first starting with a pandemic, continuing with world events that by no means many of us most of us did not expect. And um, even as we are starting this new year, we cannot quite tell yet what will be next uh, from the world and global perspective, whether it's in our businesses or whether it's in our personal lives. So I got curious to see, are there things in the insights and wisdom that we have gained from the guests in the Leaders Agenda that might actually give us some themes that we can put to good use as we start this new year? And sure enough, I found six critical themes that help us make sure that we still continue to keep focus on those things that matter the most and bring innovative ideas, products, and most importantly, outcomes into this world that make a difference, make a difference to the patients and make a difference to the world at large. So let's take a look at those themes. Our first theme is about thinking big, but also being crystal clear at the end about the need or the problem that would make the biggest difference to most people or the planet Earth if we were to resolve it. And that means actually getting close to understanding those who are affected by whatever that idea or, or problem may be getting close to the customers, getting close to the patients, and being open to what we learn. Let's see what Barbara Salami, the Vice President of Digital Commercial for Moderna has to say about this. I would say, take a step back, like just take a breather and take a step back and ask yourself, what exactly is the problem I'm trying to solve? More often than not, we lose sight of the problem um, when things start getting very complex. And I think to understanding that and just reiterating that would help. And then, you know, ask for help too. Um, you don't have to be a superhero. In reality, there's hardly any digitization or digital effort you put, you try to put in place that would be um, one man's job. It, it does take a village. So recognize that. And, and I, I think last but not least is really come in with that humility, recognizing that your idea might, your idea might not be <laughs> the idea that gets picked or your idea might fail, whatever the scenario is, right? But be willing to pivot and really always try to take a data-driven approach to, to um, you know, problem solving. Absolutely. So we start, we really start with, you know, what is the end-to-end -end process? So, and maybe I, I'm even actually, maybe that's, one or two levels down. We start with what is the North Star, right? And what's that crazy North Star, which... I love what Barbara has to say about that. Let's also see what Tony Olvik has to say about understanding customer needs better. He is quite the authority on how to do that well. He is the founder of Strategy Consulting and has dedicated his life to this particular topic. And these are the customer's true needs. Right. And what I find so interesting in, in many companies, and we've run a lot of studies on this, in most companies, there isn't agreement as to what a customer need even is. Mm. So, you, And this is one of the reasons why innovation is still such a guessing game. Companies know that they're trying to create solutions that address unmet needs, but marketing, sales, development, R&D, they don't agree on what a need is. They can't agree on what the needs are or which are unmet. And so they debate what solutions they should be pursuing without the knowledge of the, the targets in effect, right? The outcomes that they're trying to achieve. So now that we know how to make sure that we are representing the needs of those that we'll be serving, then what is the next theme? The next theme is to engage the right experts. And these are not just experts from the knowledge perspective. These are people with the right passion, the right curiosity, wanting to make a difference beyond what may be possible with our current means. One person 
that has a lot to say about that is Mi Young Chun. She is currently leading the MIT Innovation Hub for Alzheimer's. But prior to this, she is credited as being one of the forces that started the Brain Initiative that, of course, is resulting in all kinds of innovations today that we could never even imagine, still even five years ago. I think what's most exciting thing about National Initiative is how you inspire many people who had not thought about brain, yes. or maybe I should come in and solve brain problems. So this is just like you know how the moonshot, I think the project in 1960s really made so many people who never wanted to be an engineer, ended up becoming an engineer. Same for a brain initiative, that you would think that understanding brain is all about neuroscientist's mm -hmm. job, but it turns out through Brain Initiative, we clarified, no, if you are a physicist, chemist, all kinds of different engineers, computer scientists, please come in and sit with us and let's figure out how our, our brain works together. And so this really mobilized great number of physical scientists and engineers to think about, oh, actually, that's true. I don't know how my brain works. I know how my heart works, but brain, yes. that's really unknown. But of course, when you bring those experts together, you must be ready to learn. You must be able to kind of put your own ego aside, regardless of what an expert you might be yourself, and really, really be ready for that learning. So, the, so along with this right people coming together, you as a leader, must be ready to learn in this process. And Christopher de Dios had a lot to say about that. Christophe is the executive director of Cure PSP. Having such an opportunity to learn, right? When you learn to get to somewhere, you know, it's a different, it's a different efficiency, right? I got here and I have a lot to learn that is the, the additional part of my brain that is not the scientist, like the executive, the strategist, uh, building all the relationship and the politics around it, right? So it, I'm in this driver's seat and, and, I, and I have a lot of opportunity to learn uh, while, while pursuing those new avenues. And to me, if, as a leader, regardless of the size of the organization, if you, if you could find that, if you could have that, to me, that drives me, right? So if I, if I was in a seat that I felt that I know all the recipe and all the secrets and I just need to apply them to a new problem, to me, that would be extremely, I was gonna say boring and, and that's the wrong word, but it would be counterproductive. Christoph is a great example of somebody who is a lifelong learner. And that is a key theme by all of our Leaders Agenda guests. However, one thing that we have to understand is when we bring a lot of experts into the room, we also bring in many different perspectives. That is at the heart of innovation. And the bigger the, bigger the opportunity, Usually, the harder it is to be able to navigate through everything, all the data, and understand what matters the most. And often, chaos emerges before we have clarity. Let's hear how that felt for Mi Young. I myself was very confused as to what should be the singular idea that we make this as a national initiative. I was very confused to myself. Uh, and because I was unknown, I had time to, you know, mule over. I could digest everything I heard, reconnect everything. And eventually, I think the idea that became a national initiative was concrete, clear, and decisive. Uh, so I think that, suppose I wasn't a scientist, I think that because of them, maybe I was disadvantaged, but then I could bring, maybe I was more personable, perhaps. <laughs> It was, you know, maybe I had other skill set yes. that I could bring in front and center and make this possible. So I would like to encourage everyone who might be listening. You have a passion. You want to make something happen. Don't worry about what you don't have. Use all you have. Even when other people say, you know, that's not really best of you, even use that and then pull things together. 
I, I think that many of people who were involved in this uh, endeavor always told me that I was the shepherd uh, of this project, meaning I wasn't the leader who took the torch and looked back and said, hello, everyone, yes. follow me. It was never like that. I was more standing in the back, looking at all of the right experts, uh, clarifying their thoughts, and then having them not steer away wrong direction that we all, I remind them, no, our goal is over there. And of course, to be able to do that well, it means that we have to pay attention to our own skills, particularly how good we are in listening and really understanding. Ken Burhab, the former chief scientific officer of Indecra Life Sciences, and now an advisor to many life sciences companies, has a lot to say about that. I think you have, you have to be flexible and you have to listen. I've come back to the communications. The communication piece is just so important. Listen and learn. Um, and the agenda will emerge from that. It will. It will along the way. And you'll, you'll find it'll take you in strange places, but you'll always learn something. You know, you, you know I have people that come that, you know, did a job and I want to do this job. Well, no, I mean, try this. I mean, this whole thing about everything has to be vertical in terms of a career. Lateral moves are very cool. Um, you learn so many things as you're going along that you didn't want to at the time. And all of a sudden you go, wow, that was really valuable. And you find yourself coming back to the lesson learned that you were there. And, and there we have it. Now, the fourth team is extremely important. And that's recognizing that concrete results matter, but also those cannot be produced overnight. So not only do we need to make sure we understand what those outcomes are that we have to produce for the longer term, but we have to be ready for the journey and know what we can do in short intervals along the way. Better is good was one of the learnings that I had as I was listening to our guests. Ranjit Banerjee, the CEO of Cold Chain Technologies, has a great way of discussing how this works and what sticking with something really takes. I think the, 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 the practical challenge would be to make sure that a there is a there's a group of believers who come together mm. and b give it some time right give yes. it some time because uh the 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 first is that you've got to come together you've got to start understanding and and, and say okay how do we go about this and each of each of us who come together will have some ideas some thoughts but i think we, there's a lot of power in in that sausage making, if I may call it, initially. But then, once we come up with something, it has to be converted into an actionable plan. That's and right. this is what I love, you know, you think big, but you act small and yes. scale fast. So what is that first step that we will take together? When I say give it some time, what happens in an organization, each company, people move around and there's somebody else. and So we have to stick with it. Yes. For some time. Yeah. Right. So it's a group of believers coming together, sticking with it and saying, OK, we will see this through. We will see this through. I mean, if you look at I'll give an example. If you look at just innovation within the four walls of an organization, mm -hmm. you know, good companies, when they innovate, they take they ring fence their big ideas and they don't let the day to day of the business impact their big ideas. They ring fence them. Yes. Right. So okay, I, I'll have day-to-day -day issues. I'll have I'll miss a quarter. I'll be great next quarter. But my core idea is is getting innovated on. Right. How do you do that in a collaborative effort? <laughs> it becomes four x yeah. harder because. But that's where you have to have this purpose-driven companies come together, stick together, and say, "We're going to do this thing. It's it's possible. If one organization can't do it, but us coming together can figure this out." And let's also hear Gary Pisano, Harvard Business School professor and an author as well as authority on strategy and innovation, talk a little bit more about the importance of building the right capabilities so that we can truly, truly make transformative innovation happen. You can't talk about being innovative if you don't have a means to put resources into the kinds of projects that 
aren't going to lead to transformation. The second is you really need to know how to do it. That is, you don't become a transformational innovator by wishing to be one or by spending money on it. You need a very different set of processes to do breakthrough, I'll use the term broadly, breakthrough or transformational innovation. Um, you need a very different set of processes. It's a highly iterative approach. It's very evolutionary, if you will, in terms of how ideas evolve. When you look at breakthroughs, they they, mm -hmm. they emerge over periods of time and there's a lot of trial and error. And you you actually need to systematize that and you can. It, it's, not, it's not random. The transformative innovation is difficult. It's also scary in many ways because there's so much uncertainty, so many things we don't know. So we can expect turbulence, we can expect failures, we can expect those things that we cannot plan for, no matter how good we are. So what then is the role of not-for-profits in helping us manage uncertainty and take on some of these journeys that perhaps if we only go by the corporate agendas, we may not consider because the immediate bottom line result may not be obvious. Let's see what Jenny Clark has to say about that. Jenny is the co-founder of Same You organization that focuses on innovation and solutions for those recovering from a brain injury. Risk-taking. Risk-taking. Oh my gosh, I love that. Say more. Risk-taking because again, you know, working for, in my corporate life in global organizations, um, uh, uh, not many want to take risks, obviously. Uh, the world is in financial meltdown. Obviously, the world is in meltdown. And so how do you get people to take a risk? You actually, in my experience, you need entrepreneurs to take risks and you actually need small organizations to take risks. And by working together to do that, and so the third sector, the not-for-profit sector, can be uh, that bridge can be feed in the innovative ideas that are based on the patient experience to the clinicians. Now, the whole world, everybody talks to me about, you know, co collaboration with patients, co you know, co-creation, co-design. And then they start putting in all of these bureaucracy, all these levels of what it takes to make sure that everybody's included and everything's, and of course they're right. It's all the right principles. Our last theme, our sixth theme, is perhaps the one that may be the most difficult one and take the most energy and time in the part of any leader who's serious about their agenda. And that is creating the right conditions, the right culture and the right spirit that allows the right actions to be taken. Now, inside the organization, we sometimes make the mistake of driving culture chains by PowerPoints. That clearly isn't the way to go, as we can hear from Carrie Pisano. But I do think with culture, it really does matter with the leaders, what they say and do and model and how they behave. And that is just absolutely critical. So if you have seen your leader, and it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't take many to mess it up. No, it doesn't. Um, and, you know, you, you need, and, and culture change is not one you can just wave your hands around and outsource it. it. It's, you have to, like, you have to put a huge amount of energy into it yourself as the leader. And you have to engage in, in uh, a, a term, uh, the, our, 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 our former dean at Harvard Business School and my good friend Nick Noria would call it retail leadership. <laughs> He's talking about, look, sometimes you just have to go out and talk to a lot of people one-on-one. -on -one. It's not like some big town hall. And I, I love that term and I love that concept. And I, I have to say, I've stolen it from Nitin many times in talking to, 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 to clients and others about, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to get out there and talk to a lot of folks about your, in this case, your, your belief in what the values should be. Um, but I think it's, you know, you, I think there's several layers. And I, and I think about a lot of the culture, organizational culture, and cultural change. I mean, one of the there's two aspects. One is scaling a culture of an organization as you grow. And I talk about this in 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 creative construction, which is as you grow, one of the problems is the culture that allowed you to be so innovative when you were small sometimes doesn't scale. And we'll end with some 
amazing advice from Tom Bolin, the CEO of Beckton and Dickinson, has to say what that culture change means as it relates to expectations of leaders. Yeah, you know, it, it's um, it's a great topic. It's it's that gets back to we call it speak up yeah. culture from from that perspective of psychological safety that people feel safe to speak up and, and share again when they see something that's not right or see something that, that can be done better in the organization. And uh, you know, a couple things. One, it's making sure that leaders are listening up because people won't keep speaking up if they don't feel that people are are, are listening and acting upon that. And so sharing stories when that's happening, sharing stories on where someone spoke up and resulted in a significant improvement. We, we do that quite a bit, right? That's around setting the examples for others to, to, uh, to live by. That's something that we spend a lot of time on. We've been training our leaders on speak up and, and how to engage with their organization. That fits with servant leadership as well too, right? Servant leadership is about not it's about supporting your team and it goes in a loop right of also empowering your team which is the other area of our strategy um, to make their own decisions to take their own action because sometimes it's when you see something go fix it don't 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 speak up you don't have to you can you don't do have it to ask. About it yourself you get, you, too right you don't right. have to ask they all go hand in hand right. in that as well um, and that people know from uh, they're there to support their teams in doing the right thing and taking action all of that is integrated in, in a very clear way. And so um, we're really pleased with how we've been advancing our culture. Actually, our latest um, associate survey that we did just a week ago, I, I saw the results and we've been in, we advanced our culture in a meaningful way over the last year. And, and I have no I doubt that. continue to do that. So those were the six themes. And I hope that we can all put them to good use as we think about what's ahead of us in 2023. Now, we could talk about those themes quite a bit, but I hope that you actually watch the episodes and pick more great nuggets of wisdom for yourself. Meanwhile, you all know that I'm from Finland and Finnish people tend to use less words for just about everything. So as I was reflecting on those six themes, one word came to mind. It's a Finnish word and it's called Sisu. Sisu is something that the Finnish people hold very near and dear to our heart. It means a combination of willpower, persistence, perseverance, and courage, such that we have a spirit of never giving up, even when facing adversity. So I hereby announce 2023, the year of Sisu. And we will celebrate Sisu at Leaders Agenda and honoring all of our guests from 2022 and those who will be joining us in 2023. We will have a little special hat that I hope more and more of us will be wearing this year. This is my Sisu hat. I wish you all a happy new year.